50s. For our Monday, we'll have clouds increasing throughout the day. After dinner time, expect the possibility for a couple rain showers. I'm WOWT6 Weather Authority Meteorologist Brad Sugden for News Radio 1110 KFAB. Schrock Innovations presents Nebraska's number one independent computer repair company with offices in Omaha and Lincoln. This is Compute This. Good morning, folks, and welcome into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company with service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, and Papillion. 402-558-1110-800-543-1110. Those are the numbers to join us on the program today. And, of course, as always, if you ask a question or make a comment, we'll put you in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Good for anything your heart desires over at the service center. And we have something I think your heart's going to desire today. All right, so... Here's the thing. We started sending the robocall yesterday. I hate robocalls. I hate robocalls. But we started sending the robocall yesterday because it's the most effective way to reach people. And we actually had a lot of customers last time we did this thank us for sending the call to to tell them about the special. Uh, Because email is just not reliable anymore. You know, you have the, the promotional folders. And it's like it's one thing if... Yeah, you know, we were sending you emails every other month, you know, so every, even every other week, you know, like, hey, come buy this great new computer. <laughs> you know, we send about four emails a year. I mean, really, we, we try to keep it pretty low key so that you don't end up, you know, saying, oh, it's another salesy thing from Thor. The preventative maintenance checkup being on special for half off is kind of a big deal. And a lot of our customers wait for this sale. They, they literally wait for it. And it always seems kind of conceited to me to say that. Like, hey, they're waiting for something that I'm going to do. Woohoo, they wait for me. Oh, I'm not, I don't wait on them. They wait for me. You know, they, but they do. You, you've heard the calls. They come in, people call into the show and they say, hey, when is the next preventative maintenance checkup sale, Thor? And we say, well, golly, it's going to be sometime in the next uh, few months. Well, that time is now. And here's the thing. We have not sent the email yet. So if you're saying I didn't get the email, it's because we haven't sent one yet. It's because I feel terrible because we just sent an email about the new website. So I don't want to send – got to wait as long as I can. So we started doing a call fire call that is going out to everybody. It's a robocall basically that goes out to uh, – to, there's about 16,000 people on our customer list that have not been in the service center in the last six months. Um, so that means they need a preventative maintenance checkup. They haven't had one yet. And a lot of those people have more than one computer. Uh, so as you can see, there's a lot of people out there that need this service. Uh, there's a lot of people. That's 16,000 people who have previously done preventative maintenance checkups and have not been in in the last six months, probably because they're waiting for the sale and they're waiting for a robocall to tell them about it. Those calls are actually rolling. Uh, we're not sending them right now, obviously, because it's kind of early. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for joining us this early, by the way, especially if you're watching on Facebook. We are uh, live streaming on Facebook right now at uh, Facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. If you uh, click like there, you can be notified of any time that a live stream pops up. We do some interesting things. I've I've had a couple people ask me to do the green room over at KMTV Channel 3. You know, like when they actually have a waiting room when you're waiting to go on TV. You know, I show up, you know, I've done radio for, what, 18 years now. And, you know, Rush Limbaugh, I am not. But... You know, in radio, when you sit down here, like I, can't, I get in here today and my board ops giving me a hard time because I was nine minutes early. Nine minutes. Radio, you sit down 30 seconds before you go on the air. Golden baby. In TV, they want you there like 45 minutes early. And they don't, I don't even have, I, this does not need hair and makeup. No. No, it doesn't. It, it's just ding. You know, I just go on TV, right? I get out of bed, ruffle my hair, jump on TV. Yeah, not, not quite. But, you know... <laughs> It, it could happen. Uh, but no, so, you know, the preventative maintenance checkup sale at Schrock is something that happens once or maybe twice a year. Um, our promotional schedule this year is looking pretty tight, actually, so we kind of have to launch it right now because in April we're going to do the ultimate upgrade, and it has to be in April because that's when Vista is dying. If you have a Windows Vista, the only people I am recommending that not come in for a preventative maintenance checkup are people who are running Windows Vista based computers. You do not need a preventative maintenance checkup because your computer is going to be dead in 45 days. It's like going to the doctor for a checkup when God's already told you you're going to die in 45 days. You do do, nothing you can do. It's done. (laughs) So uh, if you have Vista, you don't have to come in. You can ignore the call. 
So the bottom line is a preventative maintenance checkup. We're going to talk on the show a little bit about what that is because we do have new listeners coming on board every week, new listeners locally as well as on the Facebook stream. So we're going to tell you what a preventative maintenance checkup is, why you need it, why every six months. We didn't just pull that date you know, out of thin air. Uh, so we got all that stuff going on. But one of the things, if you have, you know, we, we're not open right now. We open at noon, right? And we have this new website at schrockinnovations.com where you can actually go and purchase the maintenance checkup certificate because, like I said, we have 16,000 people who are going to be looking for preventative maintenance checkups in the next two weeks, even divided between three service centers and divided among 70 available bench spots at maximum capacity, that's a lot of people. So the turnaround times, you know, if you get in early, you get your computer back very, very quickly. Um, And then if you come in like, you know, Wednesday or Thursday, we start to stack up a little bit. It's a couple days before you get it back. Um, So if you want to avoid the rush and you you, maybe you can't bring it in today, you got something going on. It's going to get even warmer today than it was yesterday. So, you know, temperature should be shouldn't be. There's not going to rain or snow or anything crazy. But if you can't make it in today, we're open from noon to five. You can go to our website at schrockinnovations.com, and you can actually purchase a preventative maintenance checkup certificate. Uh, and I can see right now, because in the, in the creepiness that is the Internet, that uh, right now we have uh, four of you on the website. A- of those four, uh, we have one person looking at all the specials where we have some computer stuff in there, too. Hint, hint. Uh, and also one person is actually buying the preventative maintenance checkup certificate. Now there they are two. So uh, people are actually going to the website where you can purchase these preventative maintenance checkup certificates. They're delivered to you via email, and they're valid for six months from the date of purchase. So the maintenance checkup is half off. It's normally $90. The certificates are available for 45 When you purchase the certificate, it comes to you via email. You can then print it out, bring it in, and show us on your phone. It all, they all have special code, so it's not a big deal. Um, and then you can re- you can claim those preventative maintenance checkups at that point. So it's super easy to do over at schrockinnovations.com, even though we're not open. This is so much easier, by the way. I remember last time we did this, it was like, well, if you want to buy one, you can call you know, call the service center and leave a voicemail, and we'll call you back. Then, of course, what happens is at noon when my guys come in, oh, you know, good morning. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, Bob. You know, <laughs> as they come in the door... They have a line of customers outside, and they're like, oh, boy, we better get these customers helped. And so they start helping the customers, and then the phones start ringing of people who are wanting to buy preventative maintenance checkup certificates. So they never get to the voicemails until, like, 530. And then those people have all gone to dinner, you know. So then it's, like, really confusing who got called, who didn't get called, the whole bit. So right now, this time, you can go to our website at schrockinnovations.com, the brand-new and improved schrockinnovations.com where we have all kinds of cool stuff. we got some really fun stories up there we're going to get to today, too. Like, uh, here's a good one. If you're a terrorist in New York, how you can actually buy yourself a boarding pass. Oh, oh, did I say buy? Sorry. You can steal. You could print your own boarding pass, even if you're on the no-fly list. That's one of the top ten how-tos on the do-it-yourself section, I'm sure. How to print your own boarding pass at the airport if you're on a no-fly list. Brought to you by Schrock Innovations. Oh, my gosh. When, you, when I tell you what happened and how this went down, it's going to blow your mind. Number two, we've got a cool article about uh, how to disable those annoying malware bytes pop-ups. We're going to kind of – you can go to the do-it-yourself section and see that one there. That one's pretty cool. Uh, we also have a funny article. We've talked about hackers and bad guys and things like that. We know that you can get your stuff stolen from the Internet, right? You can go online and people can steal stuff from your online computer, your Internet-enabled device. But how do you steal stuff from an air-gapped computer, like the Iranian nuclear centrifuge computer that has not connected to the Internet because the Ayatollah is smarter than that? So he's going to keep it. Oh, no Internet here. (laughs) Ha-ha. There we go. How do you steal from that computer? And the answer is using the blinking hard drive indicator light. No joke. We're going to tell you how bad guys can steal information from your computer through your hard drive LED light. Very slowly. But they can do it. (laughs) And we're going to tell you about that on the show today. Also, of course, we're going to take your calls. 402-558-1110. 800-543-1110. Those are the numbers to join us on the program. If you have a question about preventative maintenance checkups or what's included or if you should get one for your computer, feel free to give us a call. You might actually win the $25 gift certificate, and then you get $25 off the half-off maintenance checkup. Now, we don't – one of the things that occurred to me yesterday is – you know, Kathy mails you that certificate in, like, the ye old postal mail. So it's very 20th century, very sexy. Um, and 
we could actually probably go to a coupon code now, right? Because you could use it on the website. Hmm, the things you don't think of. All right, but I can't really give the coupon code on the air because then everyone will use it, right? It's like if I said, like, gee, if you went to the website and used promo code new site, you could get $25 off any computer, any new computer. That would be kind of like me giving $25 to every. Oh. <clears throat> do we have, we have a delay dump, right? 402. No, no, I'm just joking. Don't, don't really do it. Come on, man. <laughs> That was really convincing. My board almost dumped me. 402 558 800-543-1110. Let's go to a phone before I get into trouble. Glenn, you're first caller up on the program today. How can I help you uncompute this? Hi, Thor. Um, enjoy your show. And I uh, like the Facebook stream. It's pretty cool. Hey, thank you. <clears throat> um, excuse me. I have a question. Oh, by the way, I've been uh, doing this IT thing for 25 years as a professional. And, boy, I listen to your show, and I learn something every time I listen to you. Well, you've been around long enough to know if you, the second you stop learning is the second you're obsolete. I mean, that's that's, right. oh, that, that's how this whole industry goes. Yeah, and in, in the corporate world, you only know the corporate world. You don't know the outside commercial things. You know, that's where I get from you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, and it's kind of cool, too, because knowing the tech and knowing how to fix stuff is one thing, and then knowing how to do it for people in a way that makes them feel good about using their tech, that's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, so it, it's kind of funny because we wrote all these do-it-yourself articles years ago, and uh, I had a meeting with my SEO guy, and he goes, Thor, these articles from, like, how to, how to po- properly power cycle your internet connection or how to run a check disk on your failing hard drive, these are incredibly popular. And I'm like, really? And then he says, in India. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, we have yeah. lots of Indian traffic, apparently, yeah. coming to our website to learn how to do a check disk. So uh-huh. go figure. We're helping people around the world. That's schrockinnovations.com. Mm-hmm. All right, what well, can I do for you, Glenn? Well, I've got a question. I have a uh, backup strategy for my computer where I copy from a solid state hard drive, which okay. is absolutely fantastic. I copy that partition to another physical hard drive and then hide it. I re- bought a new computer and then I imaged a uh, base image, put everything on it, patched it, and put all my software on it, and then copied that off and hid it. Now, say my solid state hard drive fails. Okay. I need to boot to a boot disk. And I want to copy that partition and unhide it. I can do everything except for unhide that partition with a free utility from a boot disk. Do you have any ideas how I might be able, for free, be able to boot to a boot disk and unhide a copied partition? Why are you hiding the partition? Um, so for your hacker analogy, is for, for instance. Say, so it looks like a blank hard drive? So, yeah, everybody listening, when you hide a partition on a hard drive, um, it, it, a lot of time for a normal person, that's called a data recovery, <laughs> you know, where you plug in your external hard drive and it says, er, this drive can't, it needs to be formatted. And then you bring it into us. You're like, oh, my gosh, I need to get all the pictures off of it. And, uh, you know, it's so in those cases, the partition is, quote, unquote, hidden because it's failed. In your case, you're purposefully hiding that partition so that anyone who looks at the hard drive will see a blank hard drive and therefore – Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's pretty interesting. You know, in the early 90s, um, in the, there's kind of uh, stories about the spy master days in the early 90s as computers kind of came of age. Um, and information was, uh, was, you know, the Russians are very smart. Information was given to the Russians on a floppy disk. And the floppy disk was a similar thing, had a hidden partition, a tiny little hidden partition just big enough to hold one file. And then the Russians would grab the disk and they say, this disk is blank. And like... The other spy was like, ay, 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 you know, <laughs> okay, well, I got to tell you how to do this, got to tell you how to do your own job. So in your case, you're hiding that partition so that anyone who looks at the hard drive says, hey, this hard drive is blank. Um, okay. The easiest way to unhide the partition would be to plug the hard drive into a functioning computer. Sure. You know, now, from a, I, honestly, to do that level of work for free from a boot disk, that's some pretty low-level stuff. Um, you're talking about probably custom software. I don't, I'm not aware of any free utility um, that would purposefully allow you to restore a hidden partition. I mean, it, it's like it's one thing if you had a utility that was designed to hide the partition and then expose the partition that it hid, but th- that's such a, a weird thing. It's almost in the realm of why would you wanna? Uh, why would you hide it? You know, that that's the. So why would it, why would someone create a utility to unhide something that we don't know why you would hide in the first place? Um, especially if, uh, for example, you went with a Western Digital external hard drive. Uh, they're all encrypted by default, and you can actually set an access password on the hard drive itself so you can't even get to the partition. And if you remove the hard drive to hook it up to a piece of data recovery equipment, the, uh, the contents of the drive come out garbledy gook because they're all encrypted. Mm-hmm. 
So, I mean, there, there's a lot of other ways to do that. But, boy, I don't, I'm not aware of a free utility that allow you to uh, unhide data that you purposefully hidden to make it look like it's not there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, there's ways you can do it. To, you can pay for it. It'll cost like 60 bucks to get to say, hey, here's a utility to hide your partition. That'll give me $60 to unhide it, you know. <laughs> but, well, uh, you know, you'd only need to pay it if you have to recover the data, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's a good idea. What I do is, <clears throat> excuse me, extract the drive and then hook it into my laptop and then use the same free utility to unhide it because you can toggle it. Gotcha. And it's a great way to, because I can recover my computer and get it back to my base snapshot of it when I first built it back in December, I can unhide it and have it up and running in, in essentially 10, 15 minutes. Now it'll be 20 because I have to take it out of the case. But you know what? For, for free, what do I want, right? Yeah, exactly. For free, you can't get much better than that. Thanks for the call, Glenn. I appreciate it. Sorry, I don't have a, I don't, I don't have a utility that makes you a master Russian spy, okay? God, what do you want from me? No. <laughs> Thank you for the call, Glenn. We got you in the drawing for the $25 Shrock Innovations gift certificate as well. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Speaking of spies, it's a great segue into this story. All right, think you're safe from hackers when you're offline? Yeah, you can get your data stolen by a drone on an air-gapped computer. So this story is actually up on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Shrock Innovations where we're live streaming. It's also available on the Shrock Innovations website as well. But if you, uh, th- this is particularly interesting because, okay, you, every computer, every PC has a hard drive indicator light. It's that little red, usually red, light on the front of your computer that blinks when the computer's hard drive is thinking. And the faster it's blinking, the harder it's thinking. That sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. The faster we blink, the harder we think. And in fact, sometimes that light can blink so rapidly, we're talking 6,000 blinks a second, that it appears to be solid. Like to the human eye, it looks solid. So how do you steal data from that particular device? Through an LED, which is what it's all it is. It's a little LED. There's two wires that go to it, positive and negative power. It's like a... It's like plugging something into a 9-volt battery. It's not complicated. It's not like a, uh, there's a master transmitter or anything in there. So what you do is you have an air-gapped computer. An air-gapped computer is a computer that's not connected to the Internet. So it's kind of like your old Windows 98 computer. <laughs> that would be a great example of an air gap. It sits in your closet. If you turned it on, it wouldn't know how to get online. So that computer cannot be contaminated from outside. So you take a USB flash drive and you plug it into the computer. When you plug it into the computer... It infects the computer with a virus that identifies the target information that we want to retrieve from the machine and then allows you to transmit that information out of the machine by blinking the hard drive indicator light in a series of rapid Morse code-like blinks. Yeah, at 6,000 blinks a second, which is still pretty slow. I mean, let's just say your average Navy boy isn't going to be able to decode that. (laughs) You know, he's not going to be able to get that. But... A computer with a video camera filming it could. So here comes the drone, right? So now your, your computer's in the office. It's air-gapped. You know, the hard drive light is blinking like a madman. You think, oh, wow, that thing's doing something really hard right now. Gee, that's not suspicious at all. Hmm. And so then a drone suddenly appears, you know, out the window, and it's filming in the room. And at first you're like, oh, no, you know, wow, somebody's filming in my bedroom. This is terrible. And then you realize they're filming my hard drive indicator light, and then the drone flies away. And the information has been transmitted from the air-gapped computer to the drone's video camera. And now you either have to shoot it down or track it down or figure out how to get the drone before it transmits its video back to its spy master source in Russia. So, yeah, you can steal data from a computer through the hard drive indicator light. Wow. That is some pretty Stuxnet stuff. (laughs) 402-558-1110. 800-543-1110. Let's jump back into those phones. Dan, you're next up on the show. How can I help you today on Compute This? Hi, Thor. Hey. Say, um, we were gone for a week, and I had the computer, left it here, unplugged it, and when it came back, I plugged it up and uh, had a whole bunch of emails, so I replied to one. And then I um, went and checked the sent items folder. Okay. And everything was gone except the one I just replied to. Interesting. So all your old ones were gone. All the old ones, all the sent items were, were gone. Okay. So who is your email provider? I'm, um, Cox. Okay. So you're using a Cox.com email account? No, I'm, I'm using, I was using a, I started out using uh, uh, Out, Outlook Express, and then they, they, they changed me to Windows Live Mail. I, th- I think it's called. Yep. Yeah, Outlook Express went bye-bye. 
Yeah, and uh, so I'm using Windows Live Mail, and uh, I found all of the emails. They're all in the deleted items folder. Really? Everything had been d- deleted. And then uh, I went back and checked later on to see where the one email that I that was in the sent items folder, and it is now in my in in uh, inbox because I I took all of those from the from the deleted items folder and recovered them, and they didn't put them in the sent items folder. They put them in my inbox. Yeah, whenever you whenever you recover something from the deleted folder, it sticks it back in the inbox, figuring. Now you can move it wherever you want to move it to. Yeah, so even the the one that was in the sent items folder, it is now back in the inbox. Okay, so what we had is somehow your sent items got moved to deleted items, and then when you recovered them, it moved them to inbox, and now you have to move them back to the sent items. Well, I've I've got to figure out why the sent items folders are being deleted and why they're moving back into the inbox. Is That's, it happening continuously or is it, I mean, is it, if you send one now, you said it was still in the sent items. So it could it have been a one-off event is what I'm getting at. Well, the, the one item that I sent was in the sent items folder. And when I came back uh, an hour or so later, it was in the inbox. It had been moved from the sent items folder back into the inbox. Gotcha. By, by itself. Well, it's obviously the Russians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> Sorry. Or, or Hillary. You know, I, I've, I've, I've decided not to go there anymore. You know, that's like, you know, water under the bridge. You know, in fact, this is something I'm struggling with. Maybe you can help me out with this, Dan. This is kind of an aside. This is called a tangent, and I'm well known for them. So we want to do a bit, right? We thought it would be really funny because you can go onto a website for like called Fiverr. And for five bucks, you can get people to do almost anything. And there's Donald Trump impersonators on Fiverr. And you can get 16 words for five bucks. So for about 50 bucks, we could write a script and we could put together a pretty funny Donald Trump bit. You know, like Donald Trump was using Kaspersky antivirus, but it's made in Russia. So now he can't use it anymore because, you know, everyone's after him. So maybe, you know, he wants to move to Endpoint. And, you know, we call him like, is this Don on line one? Wait, Don, like Donald Trump? Don't call me that. Oh, sorry. Uh, President Donald Trump. No, it's it's Mr. President Donald J. Trump to you. You know, we we could have we could have a super funny bit with that. You know, and and all the you know the Trumpisms along with it, and it would just be genuinely funny. But here's the problem: if I do a Trump bit that in any way makes Donald Trump sound like a human being, I'm going to annoy half of my audience. That's right. And if I do the other way and make him sound like a moron, I'm going to annoy the other half of my audience. And if I try to thread the needle and go down the middle, I'm just going to annoy everybody. I know. It, you've got to remember that there are some people that uh, that uh, don't care for Donald Trump. Well, and that's the thing. It's like it would be a funny bit. I don't. It, there's nothing political about it. It would be funny that you know we could make fun of it. And, and it, I mean it's kind of like what Saturday Night Live used to be before it got like super ugly political. Yeah. You know, it's like where it was just funny and you're just like, oh, man, that's funny. Even the people they were making fun of would laugh at it because that's funny. I don't know. So anyway, that, sorry about the tangent there, but it was one of those things we were discussing. It would be super fun to do, but we're like, man, it would just tick off so many people. I don't know that we should do it. So you can, if you, anyone out there has comments on it, you can pop onto Facebook, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations, and, uh, and then let me know what you think of that idea, if we should do that or not. But uh, as far as your emails automatically moving from one folder to another, that can happen. Things like that can happen if you have a corrupt email database. Now, here's the problem, though. Usually when you have a corrupt email database, Things don't move from folder to folder. They just disappear. Um, yeah. So I guess if they're moving from folder to folder, the, the first question is, I mean, and, and this is kind of silly, but we have to cover this base. You should probably change your email password just to be on the safe side. Um, we can't eliminate the possibility that someone else is in your account. Now, obviously, it would be a real jerk thing to do to manipulate where you, what folder your emails are in. You know, that's just creepy, right? Yeah. That's like when you, you break into someone's house and like you move a you move a plant or something and then leave, just so they knew you were there. Yeah. yeah. It, again, that's like a Russian thing, right? You go stay in Moscow and all of a sudden people are in your apartment and you don't know why and they they don't they don't like leave you a note, but you swear that the mail was on the other side of the end table when you left. You know. Yeah. Hmm. 
So anyway, so yeah, I mean, the first thing I would do is try changing the password. I know it's a long shot, but change that password. The second thing is, is if this problem continues and things keep moving on their own from yeah. folder to folder, yeah. what we probably want to do is we probably want to delete the email account, the Cox.com account from your live mail, and then recreate it. Delete the, the, uh, the Cox.com account. From, from your computer, not, not from Cox. Right, so you're not going to get rid of your Cox email from Cox, but on your computer you have a program called Live Mail yes. that's going out and checking your Cox account. So there are settings in that account for your email. If we delete that email account, it will delete all the email saved on your computer. That's the downside. But then we can recreate that account again. So if there is a corruption in the database, that will, in essence, delete the database and recreate it. Okay. So try changing the password first. That's less drastic. The other option will obviously lose you all the email, but we can do backups and things like that to work around it to, to get that taken care of for you. So, you know, I, I did find on a, on a Google search that um, Windows is doing away with the, with the Outlook.live uh, Yeah, Live Mail is already dead, too. So they moved you from one, like, dead and cold program to a, a, a dead and cooling program. Yeah. Now they want you on Outlook.com. They don't want you on a, a like a or the the Windows 10 Mail app on your computer. You know, honestly, um, get Outlook, like the full full blooded version of Outlook. It's an amazing program. It works great. And if you don't need all that functionality, or you don't want to spend like the 150 bucks to get it, there's a freeware and open source version called Thunderbird. Thunderbird. Yeah, and if you have Secure Updater, you can actually open up if you know if you right click on your Secure Updater icon by your clock, you can open up your your list of programs that it's updating. Thunderbird is in that list. You can put a check there and click update, and it'll just download it and install it on your computer. It's super easy. Okay. Okay. All righty. Thanks so much for your help. Hey, thank you for your call, Dan. I appreciate it. Linda, stay on the line there. We're going to have to uh, go to our bottom of the hour break here in a moment. But before we do that, speaking of things that you can automatically install with Secure Updater, you know, it it blows my mind. And I'm going to share a frustration with you here. It absolutely blows my mind that we have a free program called Drive Advisor. It is absolutely free. There is no revenue model. There is no catch. There is no, here's what we're selling. You know, it doesn't pop up and ask you to buy the premium version. Nothing like that. Um, it's completely free. And it's called Drive Advisor, E-R, driveadvisor.com. And you can download it, put it on your computer, and here's what it does. It tells you if your hard drive is bad. That's it. That's all it does. It just tells you if your hard drive is bad. So we have this great free program called driveadvisor.com. And on there, we've got about 1,300 people who are using it. And I've been talking about it now for a few weeks. We boosted some Facebook posts about it, things, you know, to get the the users up. Uh, How much money do you want to spend on something you give away for free? You know, yes, it's nice because it's powered by Schrock Innovations and it's a way for us to get our name out. Yeah, that's all all good. That's ancillary, though. The whole point of Drive Advisor is when we started Schrock Innovations, we're here to help people, right? I mean, we're here to... Take your technology problems and be a solution provider for you. And sometimes the solution means you don't have to bring it in. Or sometimes the solution means you don't need a technician. And there are times when you don't need us. Well, you know, if you have a bad external hard drive and you want to find out if it's bad and you plug, you install DriveAdvisor, you hook up your hard drive, and it tells you the drive is bad, you go buy a new drive. You don't need us for that. But there is no free option out there to tell you if your hard drive is dying. Until now. Drive Advisor. So here's the thing. We're giving this away for free. And at any given point, there's two to 5,000 people just in the Omaha metro area listening to this show, not counting everybody listening in you know, Lincoln and all the way out to the, you know, the other side of the state. And, we have, and I've been talking about it for, what, two months, three months now? And we have 1,300 and some odd users. I mean, literally, like, you can just, when you install this on your computer, if you go to Drive Advisor, it tells you the stats. Let's go look at those real quick because that will be fun. DriveAdvisor.com, and it's going to load the Drive Advisor page. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can see on the bottom of the page, it'll tell you how many users, how many downloads, um, and, and how many bad drives are detected. So if you scroll down, you'll see we have uh, on the user side, it counts up, which is kind of cool and kind of annoying. We're 1,300 users right now. We lost the change, apparently. We have 50, <laughs> 1,300 and change, right? Uh, 1,529 downloads. Out of 1,300 users... We've scanned 2,856 drives. That's because people have multiple hard drives. They can hook up their, all their externals, and like they have external. A lot of us have external hard drives going back years, and you can hook them all up and see if they work. 437 bad drives out of 1,300 people. The odds are, if you install Drive Advisor on your computer, one of the hard drives in your home is bad. 
but you have no idea. So you keep backing up to it. Or worse yet, you don't you back up to it. It's used to store all your important family photos. Now, it might seem counterintuitive for me to really push you to install something that keeps you out of my data recovery lab where we charge between $400 and you know, $1,800 to recover bad hard drives. Drive Advisor can save you $400 to $1,800 by telling you your hard drive is going bad before you lose access to the data, before your partition disappears or goes, quote-unquote, hidden. So I guess here's, here's what I'm saying. I don't understand why people aren't installing it. But it's Drive Advisor. It's free. You can download it at driveadvisor.com. It's also available on shockinnovations.com under web and software. You can download it, install it on your computer, and go from there. Uh, while you're on the website over at Schrock Innovations as well, you can go and check out the specials category. Also, featured products are preventative maintenance checkups are on special right now at schrockinnovations.com for half off. You can purchase one of those right on the website, and it's good for any time in the next six months. You don't have to worry about the rush. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Linda, hang on the line. We will be back with more of the program coming up next on Compute This. Schrock Innovations' line of modular computers last longer and perform better than those box store one-size-fits-all systems. When it's time to replace your computer, call Schrock at 934-9423 and find out why a modular computer is the last computer you will ever purchase. In 1798, Eli Whitney's Connecticut Musket Factory was the first business in North America to use replaceable parts in a firearm. Before Eli's factory, if your musket broke, you had to send it away to an expert gunsmith for repairs or just toss it and buy a new musket. Technology manufacturing has come a long way since the 18th century, but you wouldn't know it by looking at today's big box store computers. Dell, HP, Sony, and other manufacturers continue to take away your freedom to upgrade and repair your computer by eliminating... Um, let me know if you can hear me okay, because like I said, we're still screwing around with the microphone settings, getting this kind of stuff to work. But now you're in the studio, and you can hear kind of what happens during the break. <laughs> so we were just talking like, all right, so we have a show that we air. We, well, you can't, what are you trying to do? So we have a show that airs in Lincoln on Saturdays on uh, 1240 AM KFOR. We're thinking about moving that over to 1400 KLIN. Um, so if you're on Facebook and you're in Lincoln right now, uh, let me know what you listen to more. If you listen to KFOR or KLIN or if you're always on KFAB, uh, we're kind of interested in hearing about that. But I can't obviously say things like that on the air. The radio stations get a little upset if you start talking about other call signs for competitors. Uh, but, yeah, so this is what happens. I'm like, oh, man, if we're going to simulcast this show into Lincoln on KLIN, I'm going to have to get better at hitting these breaks. I was only three minutes late for the bottom of the hour, right? Like in TV time, that was really late. In radio time, that was bad. In Thor time... Not so bad. <laughs> Three minutes, right? I, I could go the whole hour. I don't need to take a break. I, I take breaks for you so that you can keep up, right? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so we got some conversation going on right now at uh, Facebook.com and our live stream, Facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. I did throw in a little link up there under the live stream, and I asked you if you like the live stream and you like what we're doing here, if you could click on the, uh, the review button and throw us a quick review, I would really appreciate it. One of the things with our new website, whenever you launch a new website, and this is going you know doubly for any business out there that is thinking about redeveloping a website, when you launch a new site, there's always like a, a, a bloop. So we were ranking number one, two, or three, I think, for computer repair, which is a huge source of business for our company. We launched the new website. We dropped to 17th immediately. Uh, Mark went to work. Our SEO expert got us back up to fifth. One of the things that Google looks for for placements are reviews. So if you have a business, asking your customers who are happy with you to review you is really, really, really important because we all know, you know the only people who really review things are people who are angry. So... <laughs> Richard, I listen to whatever station you're on. Uh, live in Lincoln. Okay, cool. Thank you, Richard. All right, so anyway, click on the review button and review us. It helps us out a lot, guys. So I got to get the microphone switched back because we're about to go back on the air. Here we go. We also do have the chance for light rain showers in the evening hours on Monday. I'm WOWT6 Weather Authority meteorologist Peter Sherwood on News Radio 1110 KFAB. All righty, guys. Welcome back. That's some good music. All right. Welcome back into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company with service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, and Papillion. Also streaming live right now at Facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. Uh, what you may not know listening you know, to the radio 
is when we go to like commercial breaks and stuff, we go live on Facebook. So we have like just just me and about twenty of my closest friends had a nice little chat there. Uh, you know, I was asking you know some different questions about things that I can't talk about on the air. And so, you know, later on after the show here, you can go back to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash rock innovations and get in on all the action and uh, register your opinion in the comments section there down there below. All right. So we got a lot to do. But first off, let's jump into the phones. Linda's been incredibly patient. Linda, thank you for calling the program. How can I help you on Compute This? Thank you. I, um, I'm just calling to get an update on your dad. I hadn't heard you talk about your dad for weeks, and I just wondered how he was doing. Linda, thank you for asking. I really appreciate that. He's actually doing pretty good. Um, his weight kind of ticked up a little bit, which is a, a warning sign. Anyone who has had a, a family of member with heart failure um, knows that uh, when, when your weight goes up, it can, it can indicate you're retaining fluid, and that's bad. Then your kidneys start reacting, so they give you medicine to get the fluid off uh, called Lasix, and then that's really hard on your kidneys, so your kidney function drops. So if, he's, uh, he's fighting that battle. It's, it's kind of like threading a needle. Um, there's no cure for heart failure obviously, but they can manage it through medicine and, and keep things going for him. So he's doing all right. He's doing his stuff. You know, he's getting out to the grocery store. Uh, every Thursday he calls me up. He's like, Thor, I'm on the way home, which is code for, hey, can you drive over here and help carry my groceries from the car into the house? And, you know, then he gets all, like, sad about it. Like, oh, I hate to interrupt your day and make you drive all the way out here and carry the groceries in. I should probably just make a lot of trips. And, and I'm like, you know, Dad, you know, that, it's not a problem because, honestly, it gives me an excuse to come out here and kind of check on you. So uh, without being that, that annoying kid that's always like, hey, how are you doing, Dad? Oh, okay, I'm just checking on you. You know, no, we get to visit for a little bit. I water his plants. I have a routine. I go in there. I help him put his groceries away. We crack the ice cube trays and refill them, and then we water the plants. We talk some shop for a little while, and then, uh, then I take off and head back to work. So it's a, it's a nice little visit. But thank you for the call, Linda, and thanks for asking about him. I appreciate it. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. All right, so we got a story it's on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. All right. So backing up is important, right? You're never going to hear me tell you you have too many backups. The Stewart International Airport also believes backing up is important. The Stewart International Airport is located about 60 miles north of Manhattan. Um, they serve hundreds of thousands of uh, travelers a year, a lot of private planes, charter planes, things like that. So... They pop up <laughs> uh, with all their systems. It's a full airport, right? And they're doing a backup. They have one of those Buffalo backup drives that's a network storage drive. It's a cloud storage drive. And the entire airport backs everything up to the drive. All the user files, all the HR documents, um, imp- blueprints for the infrastructure of the airport, classified or not classified. See, we, we learned the importance about this. Let's talk about Hillary again. They're sensitive Department of Homeland Security memos. They're not classified. They're just sensitive um, about how to screen passengers and things like that, what to look for. All this stuff is on their, uh, on their computers, and they back up to the Buffalo Drive. Now, the Buffalo Drive is supposed to have a password that restricts the access of the drive so that only people who are supposed to get in get in. So we got a problem, folks. The Buffalo Drive, apparently nobody's changed the default password. And for over a year, all this information was backed up to the Buffalo Drive, including, um, okay, you remember like those commercials back when you had to buy music on tapes and CDs and stuff? And it was, it'd be like, uh, what was the name of that company where you like, your first, your first subscription was like a penny? And then like you get new tapes and they charge you like a ridiculous amount of money. And they'd have those, those like, the music of the 80s is back. Yeah. You know, those kind of things. They have people on the street and they're like, whoa, I forgot about that one, man. You know, it's just, it was stupid. But anyway, it's kind of like that, right? You don't change the default password. So these hits, you know, you haven't seen these hits in a while. Hits like the file called password list that contains the password for every sensitive system in the entire airport. Every sensitive system. The username and the password on a non-backup or a non-password protected backup drive. Then worse yet, there's actually a search engine out there that specializes in finding devices that people have installed where they haven't changed the default password. Now, I'm not going to drop the name on the air. I link to it at the story. If you go to facebook.com slash rock innovations and click on the story, scroll down below the live video there, click on the story, and you'll actually get to – I just the, the link you click, I just typed in the word Nebraska and hit search. Those are all devices in the state of Nebraska that are not currently they, – they they're publicly accessible on the internet with standard passwords. 
And there are names of businesses on there that you will recognize. So please, 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 if you have an Internet of Things device, like a Nest thermostat, a wireless router, um, a Tesla, you know, (laughs) change the default password, man. (laughs) Come on. Admin, admin, not good. If you have a camera system in your business, not good. Anyone on the Internet can watch your cameras if you don't change the default password. So they didn't change the default password. And the worst case scenario here is with those usernames and passwords, a terrorist could have walked up to any terminal in the airport and printed their own boarding pass. No joke. Start to finish. Worst case scenario. And they could have got on any plane they wanted, even if they were on the no-fly list. They could have created and printed their own boarding pass. So that's some pretty serious stuff. 402-558-1110, Those are the numbers to join us on the program. Yep, that story and more available at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. Also... While you're uh, reading that story over at ShrockInnovations.com, uh, make sure you hit the shopping section under specials. It's also a featured product on the homepage. Uh, but if you missed the start of the program, our preventative maintenance checkups are on sale for half off right now, which means that uh, you can get an incredible savings. You can bring your computer in, of course. You know We're open from noon to 5 today. You can drop your computer off. The, the guys stayed late yesterday in Omaha and Papillion to get the benches all cleared off, so they're all empty and ready for you. So if you bring your computer in today at noon or 1230, turnaround time is going to be phenomenal. You'll probably have it back next day. On the other hand, if you can't bring it in today because you have plans or something and you want to take advantage of the sale, you can go to schrockinnovations.com and you can actually purchase the certificate on our website. Then You can bring it in any time in the next six months. Just show us on your phone or, uh, or stop in with it. Any time in the next six months, you can go ahead and get that taken care of. All right, let's jump back into the phones real quick. Oh, Gail says, my feed is choppy on her Facebook. Gail, are you still there with me? Yes, I am. All right, so the feed is choppy, huh? Yeah. The audio or just the video? Well, it, it's the audio and video. Oh, biscuits. But, but my computer does that for anything I try to stream. Gotcha. Well, you know, I'm noticing here um, I have a program that actually lets me stream onto Facebook, and it's telling me since the start of the show we've dropped 294 frames or 0.4 frame, point. Yeah, 0.4% of all frames. Not bad for a 45-minute show on wireless Internet. Um, but uh, the engineers here at the studio are amazing, and I'm going to probably end up talking to them about getting a wire so I'm not on wireless. That'll help my end a little bit um, to, to uh, make sure we don't end up dropping so many, uh, so many things. But uh, h- hang with me, guys. The Facebook technology is still in its infancy. <laughs> but you said, Gail, your computer is dropping, is, is choppy no matter what you're watching. Right. Okay. Who's your Internet service provider? Windstream. Okay, so Windstream, you're in Lincoln then, right? Uh, well, we're out in the country. Okay, so your only choice is Windstream. Correct. Okay, so Windstream is DSL technology. Um, DSL technology is different from cable modem technology. I'm going to be really careful here because when I when I talk about different technologies, I have a preference, um, but both technologies get the job done. With DSL technology, you tend to get a slower, consistent speed. So you get a slower speed, but you always get that speed. It is a dedicated subscriber line, DSL. That means that's your speed. On a cable modem, you tend to get a faster spot speed, but during high usage times, it's kind of like water pressure in the bathroom. If everybody flushes the toilet at once while everyone else is in the shower, I don't know how big your family is <laughs> but and how many toilets and stuff you have. But if everyone's flushing the toilet while people are in the shower, people in the shower get upset. It's the same thing on cable modem. If everyone in the neighborhood comes home at the same time and jumps on the Internet and starts streaming Amazon or Netflix, the stream can slow down a little bit. So how do you fix that? Now, you're out in the country. One of the ways you can fix that is you can pay for a faster connection. But what I'm wondering is, in your case – if a faster connection is even available. It isn't. Yeah, so you may not be able to get a faster connection. So there's that aspect. Now, the second aspect is there is a uh, – how far – I mean, how far out in the country are you? I mean, are we talking like, you know, you know, you can't see another house out in the country or are we talking well, Gretna, you know? <laughs> I, I'm out by Ashland. Okay, gotcha. So it, out by Ashland – there is another internet service provider, um, a, a good guy, a good local guy runs this company. His name is John. Uh, but the name of the company is Future Technologies, and uh, their website is futuretk.com. And they do microwave-based internet. So it's a different way of transmitting internet. It's line of sight. So they will actually go out. If you, if you have a high property, 
uh, a high piece of property and you're listening to me right now, you have a grain silo, if your house is on the top of a hill and you overlook the valley, um, you might be able to get free internet from future technologies if you call them and let them put a repeater on your property so they can broadcast to everybody in the valley. So it's line of sight technology. And as they add more of these you know, high points, uh, basically they'll send a guy out to your house who get up on the roof with a little receiver and he'll tell you whether or not he can get the signal. And if he can get the signal, microwave internet can be as fast as cable modem internet. And it's broadcast directly to your house via line of sight. Um, so I guess it, your problem is speed. That's the problem that you're up against. You need more speed. Unfortunately, the rural connectivity right now is such that, you know, which is hilarious because, you know, 10 years ago, we'd have been happy to have dial-up out in the rural areas, you know. Um, but now it's like, no, I want to I wanna stream my Netflix out here. You know, it's one of the things my wife and I always talk about building a house on some land someday. And, you know, but then I'm like, oh, boy, you know, but we'll be old when that when we do that. And then, you know. What if we have to get in an ambulance and go to the hospital or something? It's like the hospital's like, you know, a half hour away. That could be bad. It could be deadly, given my family's, you know, penitent for uh, heart failure. That could be bad. Um, on the other hand, you know, gee whiz, there's no internet. <laughs> so it's like it's kind of limiting a little bit. So, uh, but the thing I would suggest you do is call Future Technologies or look them up online. They have a coverage map on their website, and I know Ashland's in their coverage. Um, but they might be able to get you a faster signal for the same price you're paying Windstream right now. Okay, fine. Thanks. Hey, thanks for the call, Gail. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. All righty. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Those are the numbers to join us on the program. Of course, ask a question and make a comment. We'll, or You don't have to do both. You could, it's an or thing. Ask a question or make a comment, and we'll get you in the drawing for a 2,000 or 2,000. Okay, I'm going to type this real quick because uh, apparently – there we go. There we go. Now I'm done typing, and I can actually talk. Uh, you can get a $25 Shrock Innovations gift certificate, not a $2,000 Shrock. All of a sudden, the phones light up. Doo, doo, yay. You know, that's fun stuff. But uh, you can jump on in there and get yourself a, uh, a certificate good for $25 off, which is really handy if you're going to come in for a maintenance checkup. All right. Let's take a quick break here, final break of the program. When we come back, we're going to talk about exactly what is included in a maintenance checkup. What do we do for that uh, that? $45 basically when it's half off, and why you need to have one every six months. This is important stuff, so stay tuned. More coming back next on Compute This. Schrock Innovations is Nebraska's award-winning service leader. When you have a problem with your computer, call Schrock at 934-9423 and mention the free hour of labor for new customers coupon to try Omaha's best computer repair service for free. Welcome to Shrock Innovations. How can I help you today? I'm having a problem with my computer. You're at the right place. We fix problems with computers. That's why I'm here. What seems to be the problem with your computer? When it presses the power button, it doesn't boot up. How fast can you fix it? We're the fastest computer fixer in Omaha. We'll fix it fast. How fast? Real fast. Do you have it plugged in when you turn it on? Of course it was plugged in. Do people make that mistake a lot? You'd be surprised. When you press the power button, what happens? It roars, then stops, and sits. Ooh, like a lion? Like a what? Well, I suppose. Hmm, sounds like a bad power supply, sir. Is that bad? It's not good, but we can fix it fast. How fast? How's that for fast? Does it work? Yes, sir. More purring, less roaring now. Wow, that was fast. Shrock Innovations is the fastest computer repair in Omaha, sir. That's great, but all this talking is making me hungry. Do you guys sell sandwiches? We do fast computer repair. If you want a fast sandwich, you have to go someplace else. Why would we sell sandwiches? I don't know. All this fast talking is strangely familiar. Shrock Innovations. If you want a fast sandwich, don't go there. But if you want your computer fixed and back on your desk fast, give them a call or visit their website at shrockinnovations.com. All righty, guys. Thanks for staying with us here through the program. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company. Three service centers, Omaha, Lincoln, and Papillion. 402-558-1110, 543 um, I, I know the Facebook feed is choppy right now, guys. Um, next week, we're going to try something where we reduce the frame rate a little bit. It's at 30 frames per second, which is full TV right now. 25 frames per second, you're not going to notice the five frames really, um, but it'll actually allow uh, less buffering of the feed, I think. So that'll that'll help out quite a bit. So apologize for that. Uh, question just came in through email, which you can email the show, by the way, Thor at SchrockInnovations.com. Uh, JL writes, Thor, how important is antivirus software? And if it is very important to have a utility for this type, would you please recommend one for personal use? Thanks, Jeff. All right. So, Jeff, here's the deal. Yes, antivirus is absolutely critical. Um, it, it, it has been for years, and it will be going forward in the future. In fact, we recommend two programs for your computer. We recommend Semantic Endpoint, which is the only antivirus that Schrock Innovations recommends. We also recommend a program called Secure Updater, which you can learn all about at secureupdater.com. keeps all your third-party software up to date. So bad guys get into your computer because of antivirus software not being up to date. They get into your computer because your third-party software is not up to date. So 
semantic endpoint, actually, you can go to schrockinnovations.com right now under software, and you can purchase semantic endpoint for your computer. You install it on your computer. It comes with the virus-free guarantee. So that means if you would buy endpoint from us and you get a virus on your computer, we will remove the virus for free for you. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, but you can do that right from our website. You don't even have to come into the service center anymore. So if you're going there and taking a look at the uh, preventative maintenance checkup certificate that you can purchase on the site, you can also jump in and grab some endpoint while you're there too. Of course, make sure if you have other antivirus software, you don't want to run more than one, so uninstall it. So that's, that's what I would recommend uh, for personal or professional use, Jeff. I mean, it's the best you can get. Um, the problem is a lot of people say, well, I want one for personal use, and obviously I don't need as much protection as someone who is a business user. Unfortunately, the viruses don't care if you're a business user or a personal user. The viruses are written to attack businesses, which means they go through you know, persons like butter. I mean, it, it's like a warm knife through butter. Um, so you really need the good stuff. You need the same stuff the businesses run to keep your computer safe. The reason you want to keep your computer safe is it used to be back in the day, if you got a virus, I, I know there's someone listening right now is like, if I get a virus, I'll just remove it. It's not a big deal. Well, now with the encryption viruses that are out there, if you get in one of these infections on your computer, they encrypt all of your data. And all the data on every removable drive, every backup drive, hidden partitions or not. Uh, actually, I don't know. If, if you hid your partition, it might not encrypt it. Hmm, interesting. Uh, but uh, it, it's going to encrypt everything. And so as a result, when it does encrypt everything, oh, my goodness. I mean, you can't get that back without paying the ransom. So you're paying hundreds of hundreds of dollars, you know, half a Bitcoin or something. Bitcoin's what, $1,100 now? So, yeah, I mean – Antivirus can save you a boatload of money. Make sure you grab Endpoint. Thanks for, the, thanks for the email there, Jeff. I appreciate it. All right, so what is a preventative maintenance checkup? One of the things that we check for during a preventative maintenance checkup is actually whether or not your computer is infected with anything right now. Because people, when they come in for checkups, we recommend every six months. Here's why. Six months is enough time for something to break. Six months is enough time for you to have a really big buildup of gunk in the computer, unneeded temporary files, uh, temporary Internet files. Um, you know, especially now with so many devices coming with built-in solid-state drives, the, uh, the storage is smaller. So you have 128 gigs of storage. If we, move, if we remove five gigabytes of junk files from your computer, that's huge. So you want to get that taken care of. Um, also going through there, we're going to test everything. I mentioned Drive Advisor at the start of the show as a way to kind of do a smart test on your hard drive. We actually do a full surface test, which it takes time. You know, if you have a two terabyte hard drive, that surface test takes four or five hours to run. Um, but you need to do it once every six months because the smart status notifications that Drive Advisor uses to tell you if your drive is bad. When something goes wrong and it tells the, the hard drive tells itself in its log file something went wrong, that's what Drive Advisor sees. If the hard drive is unable to tell itself something is going wrong, Drive Advisor won't see that it's bad. You need a surface test, but you need one once every six months or so. You don't need to go crazy with it and do it every other day. So a surface test once every six months, no more often than that. Um, defragmenting is still as important as it always was unless you have a solid state drive, which more and more of you have now. Don't defrag on a solid state hard drive. That's bad. That'll actually shorten the life of the hard drive. Um, updates, making sure your third-party software is up to date. We're going to install a free trial of uh, uh, Secure Updater. It's a 14-day trial. If you don't have Secure Updater, we'll put the trial on there, and we'll update all your third-party stuff, all your Flash and your Java and your iTunes and your Skype and your Dropbox and all these things we all have that nobody keeps up to date. We'll get them current for you, which is going to protect you from dozens of vulnerabilities the bad guys are using right now to infect your computer. Not only that, but then we get to the physical stuff. We're going to blow the computer out. Um, inside your computer, it's almost like a dryer vent. You know, if, when you do your dryer, when you throw clothes in the dryer, you have to change the, the filter out, right? You pull the filter, you take all the lint out, you put the filter back in. If you don't do that, over a period of time, number one, dryer, dryer lint's no joke. When I, was, when I had my Wee Below Scouts out, we were trying to start fires. We got flint and steel, and we threw a spark on a pile of dryer lint. That stuff went up like one spark. If you've ever tried to light a fire with flint and steel before, you know one spark is – you usually very rarely get ignition on the first spark, right? One spark. Dryer lint is no joke. Clean the filter. This PSA brought to you by Schrock Innovations. All right. So – but just like your dryer gets that lint buildup, if you get too much lint in there, the dryer can't dry the clothes. Well, your computer has a fan too and a little radiator in there. And if it can't pull air over the radiator, it can't cool its brain. And if it can't cool its brain, it slows the brain down so it creates less heat. Slowing the brain down slows your computer down. 
Why is my computer so slow? It used to be so fast. Well, gee whiz, your fan is completely clogged. It sounds stupid, but if we unclog, we unblow, we blow the gunk out of that, not just that fan, but your power supply has a fan. Your, com- your computer's brain has a fan. Sometimes there's even access- accessory fans we have to clean out. Then, of course, there's all the capacitors inside. You know, sometimes the capacitors are fine. Some companies, in an effort to save a nickel per computer, I'm thinking of some certain name brand models here, but I won't name them out loud on the radio, will use cheap capacitors that bulge or swell as they start to wear out. Because the computer's only meant to last 18 months anyway, <coughs> HP. Um, it's only, I said I wasn't going to do that. Uh, sorry, it's just got stuck in my throat. Um, <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, but, uh, but no, I mean, they're only designed to last 18 months. So those capacitors, who cares if they swell and bulge after two years, right? Well, if they start to swell and bulge after two years and you're starting to get weird blue screens and error messages, that would be why. But if you, they usually bulge before they start to leak. And when they leak is when you get problems. So we can actually tell you whether or not your computer is going to die in the next six to eight months based on their capacitors and how they look. So there's all kinds of tests that we can do inside your computer, things that we can measure, definitively measure. We test your computer's power supply. Is it putting out appropriate voltage? Now, number one, if your power supply stops putting out voltage, your computer doesn't turn on. That's a pretty big deal. It's a pretty, pretty obvious problem too, right? If it puts out bad voltage, though, it can also fry things like motherboards, hard drives, bad news scenarios there. So the preventative maintenance checkup that's on sale right now for half off at Schrock, there's a reason why. It is the most popular service we have at Schrock. The preventative maintenance checkup sale is going on now. People have asked how long is it going on. Uh, Roughly two weeks. Usually it goes a little longer. We tell people two weeks, and then it takes another two weeks after the end of the sale to catch up. Um, So next couple weeks, you don't have to rush in today, but... If you want to, you can go to our website at schrockinnovations.com. We have preventative maintenance checkup certificates available for purchase on the website. It's a featured product on the homepage. You can also get there under the specials category under shop. Uh, While you're there, take a look around at the website. Feel free to review the site on Facebook, Google. Uh, We really appreciate those reviews. They are hugely important to us right now. Uh, So we want to make sure we get those reviews on there. If there's uh, something there you like, go ahead and review it for us. Otherwise, uh, go ahead and purchase those certificates. They're good anytime in the next six months. And obviously... All three of our locations are open today from noon to 5. So you can pop into the service center today anytime you like. Omaha, Papillion, your benches are completely empty right now. We got them all cleared off. Lincoln took in about 18 computers yesterday. Uh, And so uh, because, you know, I said the robocall started to go. And my Lincoln customers, they've been with me for 18 years now. They understand what happens when we do a preventative maintenance checkup sale. And they know that it's no joke. So uh, check it out, schrockinnovations.com, or just pop into the service center. Turnaround times are excellent today. All right. Today's winner is Linda. Congratulations, Linda. You got yourself a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Kathy will get that out to you on Monday. Uh, or if you want to use it, you can always call into the shop and tell us you won. All right. Thanks a lot for listening, guys. Thanks for watching on Facebook. We appreciate it. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you again next Sunday for another exciting edition of Compute This. This is Nebraska's news, weather, and traffic station. This is News Radio 1110, KFAB Omaha. From ABC News, I'm Michelle Fred. doing anything there we go all right it's really funny when you're right clicking and your computer won't do anything right oh, time for a new laptop this thing was not designed to live stream too it could be my laptop is why the stream is, is hesitating i don't know but we're going to work on it we'll see if we can't get this straightened out by next week guys uh but i wanted to thank you all who joined us on the facebook live stream i know it's a little choppy and i apologize for that um i'm watching my own face right now in a spinny circle on facebook so later on as you watch this you'll be able to watch the recorded video But uh, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, And thanks for going to the website, checking out the preventative maintenance checkups. Uh, Down in the comments here, I posted a request. If you could review our new website or review the maintenance checkup product, review the radio show, whatever you want to review, uh, your five-star reviews are incredibly important to us as we launch our new site and, uh, and really work hard to get free options out to people like drive advisor things like that it blows my mind i'm like why can't, should we force install it on everybody that's using secure updater and all the guys are like thor you can't do that i'm like i know but it's so frustrating why don't people want the free stuff that helps them 
Anyway, I'm preaching to the choir. All right, so we'll be back again next Sunday, guys. Thanks a lot for joining us, and have a great week.